Now this, this was a great movie, and it's the longest, like, they just keep getting longer. Toby just went, all of his movies went up, even if it was just by a few minutes. Andrews, all of them are longer than Toby's movies, but all, of, all of the movies are two hours, so. Anyway, uh. Rewatching this, I kind of understand why he quit in comparison to Toby's. His girlfriend just died, but he realizes that people need him. So, he goes out and does it. A lot of people hate um, Rhino because of the way he looks and Amazing Spider-Man, but I don't get it because people love this version. It looks pretty similar to me. Not that similar, but still similar. I didn't, I, I didn't like everything about his rhino, though, because, like, the whole missiles and shooting bullets thing was kind of stupid, but I didn't like his rhino. His accent was okay, but, yeah. Harry was a great Harry Osborn for the two scenes that we got to see him actually interact with Peter. Because Peter has a busy life, so we didn't get to see much of that. We had the two scenes. We had when he meets up with him again. And they go and hang out, skip rocks. Shit like that. Then they have the scene where they hug. just try and talk to each other and understand that he's dying. Spider-Man is the only thing that can save him. Also, I don't get how Harry figured out that Spider-Man was Peter Parker just by seeing, oh, there's Gwen. I guess Harry forgot that Spider-Man saves people all the time. Though I do love his reaction when he realizes it's Peter. It doesn't really make any sense, but it's an awesome reaction. Electro was awesome in this movie. Probably one of my favorite villains. Right by William Defoe's Green Goblin. I liked all the characters in it. Like, they had a bunch of characters. They had Donald Mankin. They had Smith. Or Smythe. The dude that helped with Scorpion in the comics. Well, actually, he was the one who made the Spider Slayers. And I, th I think he did with Scorpion stuff, but I'm not sure. They had Felicia. Come on, man. Yeah, it was pretty cool to see all those characters in it. Um, and once again, just like in Amazing Spider-Man 1, when confronting someone he knows, he doesn't immediately attack them. He tries to calm them down and stop it from becoming a fight. I really love the scene where Harry just improvises when they won't let him in and just tases the guys. I was trying to find that scene for my video from like two years ago. Like
top nine villain battles or some shit like that. That video has like Sandman's audio messed up. I should have did the scene where he's robbing that car anyway for money. That was a way better fight scene. Um, what else? I love when Electro gets revenge on Dr. Knaff or however you say his name. I honestly wonder why the dude from Amazing Spider-Man 1 that was like always trying to protect Os Osborn Norman Osborn wasn't in it. Donald Mankin was the one who took Harry to his dad. Instead of the one dude that wanted Norman healed. But there's not much to say about this movie because I really enjoy it. Besides, like, the lack of Harry. I mean, there's actually a lot of Harry Osborne, just not a lot of Harry and Peter. Like, come on. You didn't give him, give us Harry in the first movie. Though he explained why. Because of the whole boarding school shit. But. You're really gonna make it so they have like two scenes together? Kinda harsh. Um. Oh yeah, one of the deleted scenes actually made a lot of sense, you know, Mankin takes off, and when he's leaving the elevator, he presses an alarm, tells them where Harry is, they have snipers trained, he just throws a bomb out there and busts out, that was sweet, but nope, they deleted it, they still kept Harry using a bomb though, because he uses it later while fighting Spider-Man over the clock tower. And unlike James Franco, he didn't really need weapons to attack Peter. He used two weapons. The rest of it was just brute strength. Um... I think that's about it.